What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about multiple different ways that you can create fencing and site walls inside of SketchUp. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is a 3D modeling app specifically designed for use on your iPad with the Apple Pencil. Since SketchUp doesn't currently have a mobile modeling experience, consider checking out Shaper 3D if you're looking for a way to create 3D models on your iPad. It has a modeling interface that's similar to SketchUp's, but it's optimized for mobile. Plus, any model created in Shaper 3D can be exported to SketchUp or other desktop CAD formats. If you're interested in trying Shaper 3D, check it out at thesketchupessentials.com slash Shaper 3D. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a few different ways that you can create different fences and walls, and some of those are going to require some extensions and some art aren't and a lot of that's kind of driven by the complexity of what you're trying to create so I wanted to start off simple so probably the easiest way to create a fence and the easiest condition is if your fence is along a straight line and so if your fence is along a straight line kind of like this one then it's fairly simple for you to come in here and draw like a 4x4 four four post you can push pull that up to whatever your height is so let's say 5 feet and then you can just select it right click and you can make it a component and then once you've made it a component, and you can call it something like fence post, then you can just use the move tool in copy mode to create equally spaced copies. So you would just tap the M key, click on this corner, and tap the control key to go into copy mode. And then you could click on this endpoint and click divided by and type in the number of copies that you want. So divided by 10. And one note is you can also type in divided by and a distance. So in this case, I typed in divided by eight feet. That's gonna space my copies eight feet along this line. So you can see how it's really easy to create um, fence posts and stuff like that doing that. And then all I would do in this case is I would just do the same thing where I would use move, where I would use the move tool in copy mode and I would create one copy right here that runs along the face of this object and then I would just create whatever these boards need to look like. So in this case, it would be two comma four to do a two by four. Then I would just use the follow me tool to extrude that along that path. And then I would probably reverse all the faces. I would make this a group or a component. And then I would make a couple copies of that. So just very simple using the move tool in copy mode in order to do this. So this works great for fences that you need to create along a straight line. But once things start getting um, curved and more complicated, um, you need to get a little more involved. And so in this case, let's say that I wanted to create a fence that goes along this curving line. Well, I can't really use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy along this curving path. And so this is where extensions come in because there are extensions that allow you to do things like this. And so in this case, this is just a pair of curves that I've used the weld extension to make into a single line. But then there's an extension that I've talked about before called path copy. What path copy does is allows you to select a path, activate path copy, and then you can just click on this object and it'll just create copies of this object along this path. And you can type in a value, like let's say eight feet, and hit the enter key and that'll copy this all the way along this path. And so you do have to be a little bit careful to make sure that your orientation of these these posts actually matches what your line looks like. So in this case, it looks like we're pretty close. But since we already have our path, what we could do, and I'm just going to erase out this first one. What we could do in this case is we could just do the same thing, where we just move this up to wherever we want our top rail to be. We draw a 2 by 4 off of this. In this case, I'm using the line tool, and I'm just going to start on the red axis. So I'll just draw this here and then I'll use the rotate tool to just kind of rotate it until it's uh, perpendicular to this line. So I would just use the rotate tool here, probably rotate that to about there. Then I would just do the same thing where I would click on this, activate the follow me tool and click on this edge in order to extrude this along this path. So fairly simple, um, you could make this into a group. 
and then do the same thing, just make a couple different copies. And you might be suffering a little bit in realism in this case because really what this would be is this would be a number of straight boards running across here. So you could either draw your path in a straight line or maybe reduce the number of segments in this line. So there's things you could do, but this allows you to generate kind of a curving, um, this allows you to generate kind of a curving fence like this. And so you could try that with some up down as well. And so that works for creating more of a curved fence that's still kind of on a uniform face. So the next example I want to talk about is you could also use the follow me tool in order to extrude a wall. And so this example is a little bit different, but let's say I have this shape that I've drawn with the sandbox tools. I use the stamp tool to make this uh, flat, but you can see how right now this would be a little bit more realistic if I actually had a wall in here instead of just this kind of sloping outward because usually you need some kind of retaining wall or something like that. Well, in this case, what you could do is you could actually draw a rectangle in here. So I'm just going to right click on this and hide this for a second. But you can see how I've actually drawn a rectangle down into the ground here. And so if I unhide this, you can see how right here you can't really see this. But what I'm going to do is I've created a series of straight lines along the top here that I'm just going to select and I'm going to use as a path. Oops. And then once I've selected this path, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the follow me tool. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to be able to extrude this all the way around this edge. And I'm going to go ahead and triple click on this and right click and make it into a group. But you can see how this is a really easy way to create things like site walls. So probably one of the easiest things you can do, even when you have um, a face like this that goes up and down, is it's really easy for you to extrude a simple shape like this along a path, especially when it doesn't matter if this shows inside your ground or not. I mean, in this case, it really doesn't. You could come in here and maybe like uh, use intersect with face or something like that to erase out the extra but in this case when you're creating a wall like this there's not really a reason to do that so that's a great way for creating site walls using the follow me tool um, the next tip is we're going to use an extension called profile builder and I've talked about profile builder before um, it's an extension that uh, allows you to create smart assemblies so things that kind of uh, fill in different shapes and other things like that so you can see how I have different fences and other things like that and basically what they do is that they create smart components that automatically fill all of these in and I will note that profile builder is a page extension I will link to that in the notes down below but for profile builder what you can do is you can set this up where you have a path like this one and I drew this path on this face using tools on surfaces line on surface tool so that's just a tool that allows you to draw a line along a curved face like this and uh, once I did that I took all of these and I welded them into a single curve just for uh, simplicity's sake you don't have to do that that's using the extension weld but what I'm gonna do in this case is I can just come in here and I just click the, click the button for build along path what this extension does is it follows this path and it generates this assembly by generating the vertical components at a certain spacing and then extruding your um, your fence boards along that same path in order to create an assembly that follows this path. So Profile Builder is great for creating these uh, repeating profile assemblies and then um, there's also a great extension from Valley Architects. And Valley Architects has a very comprehensive instant fence extension that can either be uh, purchased as a part of the instant architecture pack, or I believe you can uh, do it separately as well. There's some kind of a yearly subscription involved. It's not a ton of money. And what uh, Valley Architects instant fence allows you to do is it gives you a ton of options of different kinds of railings. So different decorative railings. So let's say for example, that I wanted to use this uh, this very complex railing, I could just come in here and select this, and then um, I would make sure that all my edges are in a group, and then I would just click the option for Make Fence, and I'd click OK, and what this would do is this would generate this fence all the way around this perimeter, so you can see how this is really easy to create this really cool, complex fence in here. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using any of these? What do you use to create your fences in SketchUp? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that Like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that Subscribe button for new SketchUp content every 
every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.